Jalen Pickett. Uh, no introduction for the show today. We're getting right into it because we want to give you a little bit of a, a, a taste of what's to come. Uh, we're talking to Jalen Pickett today on the Penn State Hoop Show. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. That is Nate Bauer. Nate, I'm excited to share this interview with people. Um, so let's lead off with, it's not the reason we're talking to him because Jalen Pickett being the, the premier player on Penn State basketball team, and this is the Penn State Basketball Hoop Show, yeah. Um, we're happy to talk to him, but he did have a bit of a week last week, didn't he? Yeah, he's really good. He is really <laughs> good at playing basketball. And uh, no, I I think it it made sense, right? We had Micah on earlier this season, and hey, you know, surprise, surprise, the season is almost over for for Penn State, and so yeah. you know, some of these opportunities are are dwindling. And obviously, given the the week that he had last week. Uh, 41 points against Illinois, which is tied for third all time in program history. And let's be honest, it's the best in program history because the other marks were made in like the 50s and 60s. <laughs> right. <laughs> all, all due respect. All due respect. Yeah. Uh, so he, he had a heck of a game, obviously, against Illinois and then followed it up with 32 points against Minnesota. And as a result, was, you know, player of the week the world over. I mean, yeah. uh, the big 10 player of the week, national player of the week, ESPN, right. All, all of these different media outlets and arms of, of major college basketball all recognized him as the best, best player in college basketball. And he deserved it. He was, yeah. he was outstanding. Yeah. And the game against Minnesota was much more in line with the Jalen Pickett game. Not that 41 points. Uh, I'm not saying that's the problem, but eight assists, nine rebounds against Minnesota, yeah. a little bit more of what we've seen from him being more active on the glass. But if you're not missing and <laughs> you uh, against Illinois, they're getting a lot of layups underneath a lot more opportunities when, when the offense opposed to you is struggling too. But yeah, that's the, that's the, the stat line you think of 32, eight and nine with Jalen Pickett for a guard. It's absurd. Yeah. No. Well, and and that was kind of funny. I was going to rib him about it, and then decided not to. Uh, what What was up with the rebounds against Illinois? What was up is that Illinois didn't really miss all that much either. So yeah. um, there there were not as many opportunities there for for rebounding. But no, the you know it, 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 for as much as he is worthy of the recognition and as great of a week as he had, the reality for Penn State basketball is the more important aspect is they won both games right so a season that was quickly starting to tailspin on them given the four game losing streak is back right i'm not yeah. saying that they're out of the 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 danger zone they are very much in the danger zone but since we last talked they went to minnesota and got a win and that was a tough win that was a, that was a, a big win for them to be able to go on the road and get that even against the last place team in the conference and now they have Ohio State coming up on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. It's a place that Penn State has had some trouble. I mean, look, let's be real. Penn State has had trouble everywhere traditionally, yeah. right? On the road is hard. And this specific team on the road has been a challenge. But a game, again, that Penn State is really has to win and should feel fairly good about its opportunity to win. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, and I just I want to come back to this uh, quickly because I did I think either we had this stat or we we gave this stat from the Blue White Illustrated Twitter account that somebody else uh, had about uh, I believe it was Optistack Opti stats actually Jalen yeah. Pickett seventy three points um, fifty two percent from three sixty five percent shooting from the floor um, uh, the number of assists and rebounds also in that two game stretch it was two other players had done that in the NBA or in division one basketball. And one of them was LeBron James. So if you need to get out of a and the other one, tailspin, the other one's Steph Curry. That's pretty good. <laughs> Here's the thing. And, and you know, this, and I know this stats can be manipulated. It's fine. Yeah. Right. So if, if somebody had 14 assists over that span, it, it just, Let's not get carried away. He was really, really good. He, right. He, right at a moment when Penn State needed it. So absolutely. Yeah. Great, great, great for Jalen. Um, but you know, it's like, is he LeBron James or is he Steph Curry? No. But uh, but know, he had not... for his level and his moment, he had an impact on I think I think the fair part is like his impact was significant. 
Uh, not that the talent is equi- is equated and the level of skill and he's not going to be an NBA all-star necessarily, but like the level of importance of his play does yeah. uh, match those players when they were in those two game stretches of, of being dominant in, in their games. Is there yeah. anything else we need to set up before we get to Jalen? Uh, just one more thing, which is where they are right now, which is 16 and 11 overall, seven and nine in the big 10. They've got a 58 net the NCAA net rankings. Uh, They are a 10 seed in the Big Ten tournament if it were to start today. And let's be honest, it doesn't start today. And those seeds will change wildly. There are there is a stack of teams all at nine and seven, right? Like it, it, the positioning will change wildly between now and two weeks from here. Uh, And they have four games to play. So that uh, that's where they are. We'll talk about that on the back side of this. But yeah, let's get into uh, let's get into the conversation with Jalen. Jalen, what is going on? You are the Big Ten Player of the Week, the National Player of the Week, multiple times over uh, for your performances last week. How are you? How do you, uh, how are you feeling right now? Um, I'm feeling good. We had a good week last week. I went two and zero. It felt good. Is that is that the uh, I, I had a feeling, a suspicion that you were going to cut straight to the two and O part of that equation other than your stats. Right. What what um, what why is that more important to you right now? Uh, I mean, at this point of year, you know, it's all about, you know, just getting wins, um, getting chemistry, especially going in, uh, you know, tournament time in March time. Do you uh, b- before we get into that and where you guys are as a team, what? What clicked personally? Why, you know, I mean, obviously you've been putting up uh, outstanding numbers all season in a variety of categories, points, assists, rebounds. Why, why did you have such an explosion uh, just this past week? Um, Yeah, definitely. Just, um, I think taking a, taking my opportunities, um, getting open shots and getting open looks and basically just shooting it with confidence and knocking them down um, definitely helped. And then, you know, just reading the defense and, when I pass the ball to my teammates, you know, them doing a great job of, you know, making plays and making shots for us was really big and, you know, kind of sparked us to kind of get these two um, much needed wins. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, so that's kind of the the natural segue is did, did the moment play into it at all? Did, did you feel like just, the, you know, obviously com- coming off of the four game losing streak, you guys needed a win desperately. Uh, did, did that at all spark something in you? Um, definitely. I mean, I think it's just time now where you got to, you know, basically stop talking about it and, you know, start doing it. We've had a lot of, you know, mistakes that we've learned from and, you know, we're just kind of correcting them now. So we got to start putting that to use. Um, stop talking about what we're going to do and just go out there and, you know, <laughs> play, have fun, try and get back to having fun and, you know, winning games. Yeah. Are you are, simultaneously, are you figuring some things out maybe uh, you know and obviously for a guy that has as much experience as you do are, are there still things that you're learning are there still things that that maybe come into focus a little bit more towards the end of the season than maybe would have been present at the beginning of the year um yeah definitely so um you know we're coming around to this time you know playing teams two times um seeing what they how they guarded you the first time around compared to the second time you know definitely um just trying to exploit what the defense is trying to do to put um, each other in best better spots and get guys um, cleaner looks. Um, Coach Shrewsbury draw draw up some great plays for us, and um, it's just really been working out recently. Yeah, it, it kind of struck me that that uh, obviously you've you've had these very successful performances of late and all season really, but maybe the difference in, over the last couple of games has been the contributions that you've gotten elsewhere, right? Uh, your fives are giving you a little bit more. You, you've had a few more open looks go down for some of your teammates. Uh, yesterday, Michael Shrewsbury was talking about how your confidence and your play helps loosen things up for your teammates. Do, do you agree with that? I mean, do you, do you see that sentiment playing out? Um. <laughs> Well, I mean, if he says it, I'm, I'm definitely going to back it up. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah, our, our teammates are doing a great job. I mean, Kepler's been in the gym, you know, extra time doing two two workouts a day plus practice. So I'm um, definitely seeing the work he's putting in. And then, you know, playing guys like Kaye, um, a freshman, 
you know, didn't get a lot of time earlier this year, but is now getting more time now just with his confidence and different things like that. So um, it's just really big for us to see those guys improving. Um, they're both going to be great players, and they're helping us out major right now. What do you guys need to do to to be able to keep this, to, to sustain this, to, to have those last couple of games carry forward into this last home stretch? Um, I think mainly for us, you know, our defense has been pretty good right now for us. Um, you know, the way we're really guarding is kind of igniting our offense, getting us some easy looks in transition. And I think that was just like a major point for us, really. Um, you know, trying to get Cam or Funk or Seth the easy one in transition and kind of get them going has definitely been something that I feel like has helped us these last couple of games. Why, why did you lose that? But I mean, especially defensively, what, you know, where did you feel like that went? And obviously you're playing some of the best teams in the country. Um, but I'm just, where, where did you feel like the defense went for that little stretch? Um, well, we were on the road for a little bit of that. So, you know, when teams are scoring on us and their crowd kind of gets into it, you know, it's always tough to, you know, battle back from it. Um, so now, like, you know, doing different things when people get the ball in the post and stuff like that, maybe a double teaming or rotating or whatever. Um, I just felt like we've really been more connected. We've been talking more and we're all on the same page coming down the court each and every time. And I think that's a big um, advantage for us right now. How, how have you, through the course of the season, and obviously you knew what your role was going to be coming into this year, but how have you kind of grappled with knowing that you have to have it, <laughs> right? Like night in, night out, you've got to be there. You've got to be at your best. How, how have you kind of handled maybe the pressure of that or or not the pressure of that? I mean, I, I don't know if it inspires you. Like, how do you kind of take that on? Um, I think it's really just, you know, our whole team atmosphere this year. You know, it's actually fun coming to practice and being able to compete with these guys and, you know, seeing these guys that get success and, you know, having success myself. So um, it's actually been fun these last couple of games playing with them, you know, getting back to what we're doing, making threes, um, playing fast, making shots and winning games. I think, you know, that's the biggest difference from um, last year to this year is just our team atmosphere and our connectivity. Yeah. I I'm curious because – uh, it's easy to overlook when you're playing as well as you are, but at this point in the season, how do you feel? Uh, you know, you're banging bodies. How, how, how are you feeling physically at this point? I feel, I feel great. Um, I love to play basketball. Um, I never want coach Cruz to actually take me out the game, but he says I have to come out sometimes. So I mean, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta understand it there, but I get in and get a lot of treatment. Um, Justin does a great job, a lot of stretching. Uh, we do massages this year. So, um, my body feels pretty good. You know, I'm getting in two, three times a day, just trying to stay fresh. Is that something that you've picked up through your career or is that something you've always done? That's definitely something I picked up throughout my career. I mean, when I came in as a freshman, I told those guys I never like went to the training room and things like that. And, you know, maybe it caught up to me um, around COVID, but, you know, I'm just in all the time now, just taking care of my body. And it, it just helps you feel better, play better. And, you know, the results show. Yeah. We uh one of, one of the stats from your most recent stretch is uh you made twelve or thirteen shots at the free throw line, which means that you got to the free throw line, Jalen. <laughs> I know, uh, I know it's been a point of contention this season. Micah has talked about it all the time. Uh, you know, advocating for you. Uh, where do you fall on this? You know, how how do you how do you wrap your head around? you know, having four or five games now, four games where you haven't shot any free throws. You've had eight big 10 games where you've shot two or fewer. H how are you dealing with it? Um, you know, sometimes you got to play through it. I mean, you can't really focus on that type of stuff. Like in the moment of the game, you know, looking back at, it, you know, I think it was just important because I didn't shoot so many threes. So I was going to the basket majority of the time. And, you know, I was just trying to, you know, I was trying to make the shot and sometimes I would get hit and different things like that, but I just got to finish through and play through contact. Um, the rest do a great job, though. You know, those guys have the hardest job I've ever, you know, I've ever seen, really. They, nobody's ever happy with the job they do. <laughs> so, I mean, yep. I, I, I got to give them some type of credit. Um, it was just great to finally get to the line these last couple of games, though. I, I guess, have you, is there a, an unlocked you know, like, have you figured something out? Have, have they, have you communicated with them? Is there anything that they've shared with you to say, Hey, you, you know, you really need to be able to do this for us to see it maybe, or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, how do you, 
feel like you can get there. Um, yeah, no, it hasn't been really much communication <laughs> on it. You know, I'm just going to go out there, you know, I'm going to play my game and, you know, I'm going to let them try and do their job. And, you know, I can't put too much effort into them. You know, I got to put more effort into our team and figure out what we can do to win. Gotcha. Uh, three pointers have also been a little bit of a difference over the last couple of games. You're taking more, you're making more. Why? Yeah, I, you know, just putting a lot of reps up in practice and different things like that. And the way people are gardening, you know, they're going under a lot of screens. So I'm just trying to practice those type of shots. And if I get an open look, you know, having my coaches and my teammates confident enough in me to shoot them, um, it's just been really big. So they told me, you know, if I get an open look, you know, just step back there and take it. And they see the work that I put in. So it's just great, you know, to finally see some of those results go. Was that was that a point of emphasis over the off season as well? Like, you know, where where in your game did you see that uh, in terms of where it where it stood, the health of, of that area of your game coming into this season? Uh, definitely. You know, um, shooting the basketball is one of the most important things you can do now playing basketball. I basically everybody shoots threes. So um, Taj and JT do a great job, you know, putting us through workouts and different things like that of taking these type of shots. So that's definitely been a big emphasis. And it just came back like recently because we see how people are going. People are going way under. So, you know, if they're going to go that far, I got to make them, you know, I got to make them pay. Now that you've had this success, do you anticipate that changing? And what does that open up if, if it does change for you? Um, You know, I'm just going to come and prepare, you know, just like I did last week, just how I've been all year. Um, Just trying to make sure our result is the same as it was last week, just two and oh going one and oh each day. Um, if we can keep doing that, I don't care what my stats look like. I just want to keep winning and have a fun. All right. And this is this is the last thing I got for you, but I, I want to make you a little uncomfortable because I know it's hard to talk about yourself. But you know, when we when we have visiting coaches in, everyone's asked about you and everyone says that you're one of the hardest guards, right? Like the hard the toughest covers in the league what makes you unique? What makes you the challenging player to, to defend that you are? Uh, um, I do. I do. I try and make it tough on the opposing team all the time. I mean, I'm kind of a bigger guard. So if you put a smaller guard on me, I'm going to go down into the post, but then, you know, if you put like your four or fives on me, um, we're going to go out and get in the ball screen actions where they're not so comfortable guarding those type of actions. So just picking and choosing my spots on the floor, um, just playing off of whoever you put on me, um, trying to make it difficult for you to guard and putting our team in the best position to win. I, I, I lied. I, I do have one more. You, I know you told you told uh, Dick and Steve after the game on Sunday that you didn't really want to talk about the NCAA tournament. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to talk about the specifics of getting there. But what would, what would it mean to you? What you know? Where does it fall for you on your list of aspirations? Number one at this point. I mean, I've been in college. That's all I've ever dreamed of is you know getting there. You know, the time's starting to dwindle down, but I mean, still got high hopes and I hope it can come true. I mean, that's the last thing I want to do. I Penn State. Can you get there? We can definitely get there. We're good enough to get there. I have a hundred percent confidence in my team and our coaching staff that we can. We feel like we can compete with anybody in the country. And this next four games for us coming up in this Big Ten tournament, um, we feel like we got enough in the locker room to, you know, make something happen and be special. Excellent. Well, I wish you the best of luck and thank you so much uh for joining me here today. Appreciate it, Jalen. Thank you. So that was fun. Uh, how, how did you, first off, let's assess how you felt you did in the interview. Uh, I thought that was an excellent interview. Um, a minus a, what, what do you think? Yeah. I know. Ne- I never know. I never know. <laughs> J- like Jalen's interesting to me because he's so, uh, I don't know if polished is the right word, but he knows how to do it. Right. He, he just, yeah. and, and I think it, some of it is, being old he's been through it this isn't the guy that he was uh certainly four or five years ago when he started his college basketball career you you learn what to say how to say it but also he genuinely is a 
team first guy. And, yeah. and so sometimes it's, it's hard to get out of guys like that. I, I don't know if off the cuff or spontaneous or right is necessarily the way to frame it, but yeah. like the full picture, but no, I think, I think that he offered some insight into who he is and really more importantly, where they are as a program, right? Yeah. Now, like the last couple of minutes there talking to him about what the NCAA tournament would mean to him and whether or not they're positioned to do it, I, I think is as an insightful frame of reference for kind of where this team is at and how it how it sets a blueprint for the rest of the way right i mean they they need to win games and he believes they can do it so we'll see what happens yeah uh, so it's funny like we're not uh, we're not i don't think we should be assessing character and but you are when you're getting to meet somebody the first time or casting judgments i should say of like but you are kind of evaluating and learning about somebody and and one of my friends who is a fan of the show uh, i texted him i was like you know we're we're having jalen pickett on the show he's great and and the guy uh in question says oh so he's a really good interview and i said well he's very concise but he's incredibly likable and genuine and I yeah. think that that's, uh, you know, when you have a leader like that on this team of somebody who is earnest and genuine and and can express their thoughts as well as he does, you know, Penn State has a chance uh, to to pull this off and to, to get where they need to go, aside from also his level of talent, right? Like, right. And, and the ability for the team to to actually execute on, on the court and the basketball part of it. But it, it was just, it was nice getting to know Jalen pick a little bit better and hopefully fans feel the same way. Um, he's, he's really good, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, the next thing. Yeah. I, I, just one thing to add very quickly. Uh, his, his attention to his teammates, right? It, it, it serves two purposes and I, and, and at no point am I detracting from like that being a genuine element of who who he is of like mm-hmm. sharing right it's a team game it, everybody who plays these games understands that that you your success is dictated on the winning side of things by whether or not you you have company right yeah. by, whether, by whether or not the other guys show up uh and so on the front end of it it's like okay well he, he's acknowledging that uh, the back side of it is they need to continue to play well the the right. more that he talks about and provides confidence to the teammates that he has and that need to step up miles dread andrew funk seth lundy right keba jai you yeah. name it on down the list of cam winter they those are the guys who are going to really because jalen pickett brings it every night you know what you're going to get from him and yeah. so as long as those contributing pieces are there, he knows that by boosting them, by pumping them up, by continuing uh, to, to say nice things and complimentary things, it, it has a feel good effect. It, you know, it might, it might seem trivial, but I don't think that it is, especially with this team. They, they ride yeah. and vibe on feeling good. And yeah. as this is happening, that's kind of the wave that I'm starting to see for them. So let's dig into a little bit of that. Um, you mentioned Keba there and one of his comments about Keba and working hard. And especially, I thought it was interesting, uh, two, two weight room sessions a day plus practice. And yeah. um, is that, have you seen uh, on the field, on the court, excuse me, the, um, the results of that? Have you seen him play a little more physical and a little more confident out there? And is that kind of clicking in in time for this team with these young players to not be young at the right time because at a certain point when you're putting two days in 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 the gym you are going to stop being that guy that we said he needs to get bigger and stronger at some point he's an athlete you are going to be bigger and stronger do you you see kind of maybe that as a as a part of the narrative of the end of the season here with some more contribution from the young guys as a whole but with specifically with keba i i think that this is this is specific to keba but it, it extends outward uh i see less frustration over setbacks. Okay. And it most notably is at Minnesota. They were down by two points in the second half, right? So they let a 10 point lead slide and found themselves back in that predictable position of 
hey, oh man, you know, like it, things that were going well started to not go well. And that is a place that Penn State has struggled to get itself out of this season. They've really had a hard time of having, you know, kind of the fortitude to push through that. And what I think I'm seeing, it's it, a two game set is kind of hard to gauge, right? Is it, yeah, is it a small sample picture? size is, is never great right. for a large application of broad topics. But I think that Keba and Cam, uh, Miles, uh, Mikey Hen, they're finding roles and ways to contribute, even if offensively things aren't going exactly the way that they want it to. And that has been this underlying foundation slash crack in the foundation throughout this season is that if, if their shots aren't fault, right. If Keba is getting, fouled or misses a bunny layup or, or whatever it yeah. is, right? We, we've seen him get bodied by these bigger, stronger guys uh, in the interior on scoring opportunities. And that has turned into not good stuff on the defensive end of the floor. Cam yeah. Winter, when his shot isn't falling, it turns into not good stuff on the defensive end of the floor. Miles, like on and on down the list. And instead of having that right now, the, yes, there have been some some offensive wins for some of those guys, but more important is if things aren't exactly the way that they need them to be, that they have been able to contribute in other ways. And those other contributions, an offensive rebound here or there, uh, yeah. right? Uh, getting locked up for uh, you know uh, a, a tied up ball, like yeah. those things are hustle plays critical. to knock the ball back in bounds or keep possession or something like that. You know the the little things that you hope every basketball player does, but you know that hasn't been consistent this year. Yeah, for sure, and yeah. and it, it hasn't been consistent, and and they're they're just effort things, but they're effort things that you are easier to do when you feel good about the offensive end of the floor. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's an important, it's an important trajectory. And for Keba, you know, just get, getting something from those five guys is just critical. You have yep. to be able to get something out of that position. It cannot be a, uh, and I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but it can't be a, a zero points, zero rebound, zero assist thing. You, yep. just, you cannot, you cannot play four on five. Even if it's just a body, you have to be able to, to, to bring more than just fouls to the floor and I think that you've started to see over the last couple of games, those guys do that. Yeah. So going back to the head of the snake with Jalen Pickett, um, yeah. is this an all-American potential uh, with yeah. this player? Can Penn State actually land a guy who uh, deserves national recognition? Because yeah. playing on a not good team, we've seen really good Penn State basketball players not even get Big Ten accolades when you think they should, let alone right. national recognition. But he's he's starting to break through, especially you know, obviously this last week. So so here's here's like the thing, right? And this is the the uh, how the sausage is made. Your team has to win both games that you play to be named player of the week. You're, you're not going to win it otherwise. Okay. And so for a lot of years when Taylor battle and DJ Newbill, uh, Tim Frazier were putting up gaudy numbers and, and these great performances and they'd split, they'd go one and one or they'd go. Oh, and two, there was no chance. It didn't matter what they did. Somebody else in the league would get those honors because they won both games. Okay. Yeah. So like that's, that's just black and white. I think that this is going to put to the test, the, like the All-American thing, is going to put to the test, yes, name recognition, brand recognition. Jalen Pickett does not play for Indiana. He doesn't yeah. play for Purdue. Uh, it, it's going to put the Big Ten at, at stake, right? If, if you're assuming that Trace Jackson Davis and Zach Eady are both going to be first-team All-Americans, they probably are. Can the Big Ten put three yeah. into right into a into a five man? That, you know, if he's a second team All American, I think that's still a distinction and an honor and a recognition for him. But like the numbers speak for themselves, and it's not on uh, a, a, an abject miserable team. 
Yeah. Okay. This is a team yeah. that is competitive, has been competitive throughout the season, and he stands alone. Right. That's By the way, 17, seven and seven is is not like not only is it nuts, but it's you can do that in the non-conference schedule with a padded cake kind of deal. Yeah. And then it falls off. It just trickles down. Uh, it's not going anywhere. He, he's going to finish with those numbers and it's going to be a remarkable achievement for him to do so. I think the only uh, thing that would be holding him back is nationally televised games because, you know, a lot of these are just on BTN and other more prominent conferences have other more prominent games that are on the national ESPN or whatever. So yeah. like Penn state being a, I don't want to say sideshow cause that makes it sound like it's a freak show, but like on the side stage, <laughs> that's what yeah. I was trying to say. Like not being on the main floor, that does have an effect as well. But you make a great point that when it comes down to it and people who are voting and again, how the sausage is made is like, these are people that don't watch every single game because how in the world could you, um, you numbers he, are great. He, he, Numbers the, the, do the whole heavy lifting. The voters, the voters are the only thing that matters in these things, mm -hmm. right? And and based on who the organization, I mean, there's multiple All-Americans, right? There's organizations that hand out All-America status. But yeah. if it's if it's if it was coaches, I don't have any doubt. Like there would be no doubt in my mind that coaches who have faced this kid would put him on, on a first team. Right. It would be yeah. a first team ballot kind of guy. So uh, but writers. Yeah. Uh, can you count on them having as good of a sense of these things? And a, I don't a know. Nate, can you? <laughs> no, you can't. And I know because I'm a voter yeah. for all Big Ten stuff. And it is like even in the Big Ten where I'm seeing every single uh, game, every single team that Penn State plays oftentimes twice a year. Like It's hard. It's hard to yeah. have a great gauge of what everybody else is doing. Because you're also not watching, you're not watching Michigan State play Michigan for the most part. Because you're watching Penn State, you're you're watching Penn State play all these other teams, but you're not doing comparative analysis because your job is is very specific in that. Do you, do you want to get to free throws and and his diplomatic answer about <laughs> free throws? Because once again, this has been a conversation that we've had on the show. Micah Shrewsbury's had with everybody else. And uh, and I think your question about the conversation of, hey, how do I get a call? Yeah, uh, his his declining to really answer that, I think, was illuminating as well. Of Like it's it's a battle not worth fighting, it seems like. Yeah, that's that, I mean, a little bit of it's naive on my part to expect that a uh, these dialogues with the officials are going to offer some great insight of, hey, if it's happening higher if you don't initiate the contact that maybe you'll get a better call right there right he just it it is frustrating for me because i'm i have a certain level of of access right of like unfiltered access okay so yeah. this this stuff is on the air we we see this okay i what, what's Jalen gonna say right like yeah yeah i'm getting hosed <laughs> he's not gonna say that <laughs> he's not gonna say that but what what is so frustrating for me is I I'm watching this and I see the fouls. It's right in front of me. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. OK. Micah fine has to say what he says publicly. Jalen has to say what he says publicly. And Micah expressed those frustrations publicly. It's not like Micah's held back on any of yeah. this. Yeah. But the conversation, it's like, hey, well, hey, what are they saying? Right. Like what, what's the actual interaction there of like, hey, man, you know, you're not going to get this call because of this. And the answer is silence. There's, there's just there's no there's no window to it. Yeah. But when you look when you look at how stark this is, he took I didn't even realize this last year because it wasn't a topic of conversation because they weren't that relevant. He shot mm -hmm. 29 free throws in 20 Big Ten games last year. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> he had he had 10 games out of those 20 that he shot zero free throws. And in 14 of 20 Big Ten games, he had two or fewer. Yeah. This year, he shot 47, okay? So he's almost doubled uh, with four games. He will double the amount of free throws that he shoots this year. Mm -hmm. And it's still half of what Zach Eady going to finish with and what Trace Jackson Davis is going to finish with. Like if we're talking about stature and I understand they play different positions. Uh, he's had eight games this year in the big, uh, out of the 16, half of the, the big 10 games that he's played, he's, he's shot two or fewer free throws and he's had four games where he hasn't shot any. Yeah. 
And, and again, like very important point to make here. He has shot two. He's taken 238 shots from the floor. 180 of those have not been three pointers. He's only shot yeah. 58 three pointers. So like he's shooting. He's their post presence. The, yes, he's, he's the shooting. post presence. So he's down there where you get fouled. <laughs> I I just I just want to know. Like that that's I mean yeah. it's not like a it's not like a man I I'm I'm going to write a strongly worded letter to the commissioner of the Big 10 who by the way doesn't exist. But like <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to learn. I just. I just yeah. want some insight. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe uh, DJ Carsonson will let me shadow him for a day. He can <laughs> explain to me. Hey, this is this is why this isn't happening. But uh, certainly, it's not because they don't like it, right? There's no conspiracy here. It's yeah. just not happening. And I, I, look, <laughs> if if he shoots a hundred free throws instead of the forty-seven that he shot so far in the Big Ten this year. Penn State wins more games. Yeah. Yeah. Period. It is an on-court impact for sure. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I'll so leave it speaking at that. Of, speaking of on-court <laughs> impact, before we get going, um, we yeah. do have to talk about the the real elephant in the room, which is what Jalen was focused on mostly, yep. which is the next four games and the importance of all of those in order to get where they want to go and be in a secure spot or a, a really strong position to make the NCAA tournament. Yep. Um, let's go through this a little bit quickly, but also mm -hmm. give the time it deserves, right? So 6.30 tomorrow night, that's Thursday, they are at Ohio State. Yep. What What do you think about this game in terms of mm, uh, matchup? Like, is this a team that Penn State can match up well against if you've seen the numbers? And, and, and what's the likelihood of getting this done against a team that I think is a, a strong, you should beat this team, but of course... You know, you never know. Yeah, it is it is the second worst, right? So it's the 13th seed in yeah. the Big Ten. Okay, so they've won three games in the Big Ten this year. Uh, right, this is, this is a team that will continue to fight, though. They will continue to play hard. Um, they just got waxed at Purdue. They got waxed at Iowa. They scored 41 points in a loss to Michigan State. Like, they've lost decidedly over the last three games. But before that, there were a bunch of competitive losses. So it's just a question of, okay, February 23rd is Ohio. Like, have they checked did, out who shows up? Have they checked out? Thing. Right. That's it. That's it. That's the question. And if two things, if Penn state takes on the mindset that this is a breather to get to, what's next, which is two out of three at home and yeah. NCAA tournament and all that stuff. If that's the mindset, Penn state's in trouble. Yeah. R regardless. Uh, you, you mentioned two out of three at home Rutgers and Maryland um, sandwiching in between there is Northwestern on the road at nine. Yep. I'm just for time zone sake at Northwestern. And also that's a good, a uh, good team. <laughs> Yep, that that feels like a loss. So uh, Rutgers Sunday at six thirty, is that a, is that a game you can lose? And then uh, how does that how does that factor in here? You know, do you have to get both of these home games? Not really. You got. I mean, my push right now for them <coughs> in terms of how I see what needs to be done is win all four. Okay, right. <laughs> like Northwestern is a very Right. Just just go out and win. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're doing the math of, hey, where does this put them? They need to beat Ohio State on the road. They need to beat Rutgers at home. Those those two games ha more or less have to happen yeah. for the last two games to be. To not have the world on their shoulders, right? Because if, right. You, if you beat Ohio State and then lose to Rutgers, now you really have to win at Northwestern and against Maryland. Like both yeah. of those games become must win. And I think that's a really tough spot to put these guys in. But beat Ohio State, beat Rutgers. Then if you find a way to split Northwestern and Maryland, they're in. I mean, it's it, they, they will have the, uh, the resume, right, to, to propel themselves into the Big Ten tournament with 
um, where it doesn't, they don't need to go on a huge run. They might need to win mm-hmm. one game, mm-hmm. but they don't need to go on a huge run uh, to be able to, to get to where they want to go. Well, the other thing is, if you win some of those games, you have a better seating in the Big Ten tournament, and therefore oh, you have an easier path in order to get another quality win. I guess, where where do you come down on uh, projecting some of this stuff? Do you have an idea, a ballpark in your mind of where they might seed in the Big Ten tournament after these four games? Yeah, if they if they win if they win three games, if they win three or four, they will avoid the first day. Yeah, which is the whole thing. <laughs> is they can't play they can't play on the first day of the Big Ten tournament. If they do, it literally docks them. Their metrics will go down based mm-hmm. on the team that they would likely face, which is Minnesota, right? If if right. they come in as the 11 seed and they face Minnesota, your metrics go down. So they have to have to have to have to find a way to be at least the 10 seed or higher. If they win 10 games, that will happen. Um and then, yeah, you, you go from there, right? But, um, but it, it's it's very important. It, again, like none of this stuff matters if they can't beat Ohio State on Thursday night. So, yep. square one is get through that game, and then you can address the rest as as it comes. But, 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 if if you're projecting out, if they get through Ohio State, and you look at Okay, Rutgers six thirty on a Sunday. Eh, you know, you might get a crowd, you might not. Probably not. Mm-hmm. But win those two games, and regardless of what happens at Northwestern, Maryland at home, senior day. Sunday, senior day at noon has to be bonkers. Like yeah. it, it. Penn State. I, I don't care if they recruit like anybody just hand it hand the tickets out drop them from an airplane <laughs> they need to fill the price jordan center yeah <laughs> for that game uh if that is the situation that they're in so hand out two we'll tickets see. for every seat and then somebody shows up for sure that way you don't have to worry about it <laughs> just just give them away <laughs> give them away whatever yeah. you lose in ticket revenue you will make up for if they are able to win that game so we'll see it, it could be it like it's very intriguing the notion of having this right this march 5th unbelievably consequential game in yeah. Penn State basketball history that just it just doesn't happen so yeah the last time we were on pace for one of those uh covid happened and uh that was the end of that um so that that's the end of the BWI Penn State hoop show I'm Thomas Frank Hart. that is Nate Bauer we're going to find out a whole lot I mean, most of this is going to be decided this week, as Nate yep. uh, said. So um, thank you to Jalen Pickett for coming on the show. Uh, we really appreciated his time. We appreciate your time as well. As always, should have said this earlier, subscribe to Blue White Illustrated on YouTube. Make sure you hit the uh, notification button so you know when the Hoop Show goes live because it does float a little more than our other shows, which are, you know, when they are during the week. Nate, have we set a time for next week? Are we still on for Wednesday? Um I believe, no, no, we'll have to go Tuesday next week because of the the game on Wednesday. So yeah. does that work for you? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do what let's uh, we we do our our uh, meeting. You get to be a part of our our program uh, <laughs> a director's meeting. It was that that was it. It was four sentences. We're at, the next show's on Tuesday. So that'll do it for the BWI Hoops show. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. Like I said, that's Nate Bauer. We will talk to you next Tuesday. Ooh.